G'day, welcome back to RC Model Reviews, and today we're looking at the latest radio from Jumper. No, that's not it. But this is the Jumper radio. I've been using quite a bit, and I've been really liking it. I, I like the small form factor, I like the light sticks, uh, I like the multi-protocol. Some things I'm not so fussed about, this horrible coating that wears off and gets sticky over time. That wasn't so flash. And one thing that surprised me that I, I didn't like about this radio, it has no handle. There's no handle, so carrying it actually is a bit of a pain. If you're carrying a mod or a whole lot of other stuff, there's nothing just to conveniently hook your fingers under. It's quite a, even though it's small, it can be quite bulky. So I really missed having a handle on this, but it's full open TX, it's got the full complement of switches, it doesn't have any sliders either, which is, I, I make a lot of use of sliders for things like flaps, and actually retractable undercarriage, I find sliders usually fall under your fingers a lot easier than fumbling for a switch when you're looking at the model. But this radio, I like it, I like it a lot, as it has performed flawlessly for me, and um, yeah, so I have continued to use it. Now Radio Master of course had an equivalent, that's this thing here, and this also worked really well. Um, I made a mistake when I, when I looked at this because I said it doesn't have any trims, there's no trims, how do you do the trims? Well it does have trims, it's just they're way out of the way, they're way up here, see these things here, it's a four axis joystick for doing the trim. So if you're f flying, um, and I, tend to I fly mode one, so I've got to have both thumbs on the sticks, which means if I want to add some up trim, um, I've got to take my hand off the elevator and reach up here like this, which is really a pain. Um, it's so much easier if your, your trim lever is closer to the stick. So, but that's just me, that's mode one. Mode two shouldn't be too much of a problem, but you're still going to reach way up here, which if you're looking at the model, finding these, not so easy, but hey-ho, apart from that, this was, or well, this is a brilliant radio as well. So these two sort of like Siamese twins, um, same concept, different implementation, very similar form factor. Either of those radios would make you very happy, uh, because the price point's also quite low. But now Jumper's brought out a new radio, a new radio. Just when you think you'd never need a new radio, these manufacturers come up with new ones, and you think, oh, I must have that because it's so damn cool. So what the new radio um, looks like is this. Here's the, no, this isn't the new Jumper radio. This is a DJI. FPV drone radio, hang on, how could I possibly be confused? Because obviously the, a new jumper radio would look nothing like that, would it? So let me get the actual new jumper radio so you can see. You've got to take it out of its lovely little carrying case here. I'll show you that in a moment. Don't get too excited, here we go. Right, so there could possibly be no confusion because this is the new jumper radio. <laughs> Do you notice any vague similarity? In fact, this is really interesting because some people say, oh, these the Chinese manufacturers, they just copy other manufacturers. But I, I prefer to think of it as they're inspired by other manufacturers, not necessarily copying. These two are very similar. DJI Jumper. This is the Jumper T Pro. Oh, I can't remember what it's called now. Anyway, look at the title of the video, you'll know. <laughs> so many I can't keep up. But it is obviously taken its inspiration from the DJI FPV drone radio. Even when we look at the top here, look, even the the, you know, we've got the, the, the momentary contact, momentary contact, three position rocker switch, three, well, yeah, three position rocker switch, the fold up antenna, look, see that? I mean, there is, you would swear that these were brothers from a different mother, but they have so many similarities, but it's not a complete copy. You'll notice we've got a rolly wheel here, a little uh, encoder there. Where would they have got that idea from? Well, I guess they were inspired by the Tango 2. In fact, from, from here down, if we draw a line across here, from there down, it's a Tango 2. And from there up, it's a DJI FPV drone controller. <laughs> so one could say charitably that it is the best of all worlds. And in fact, yeah, I really do like this radio. This is, they've learned a lot from the original radio that I like so much. They've taken the jumper, this one, and they've improved it in a number of ways. First of all, this is just plastic. There's none of that crappy coating that wears off and goes all sticky. That's good. It's, it's, it's a very firm radio. It's a little larger than the previous one. Look at the size. It's a, it's a bit bigger, which is, to be honest, um, I this was probably maybe a little too small. This is a much better size. It feels more comfortable. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be so happy it's got a neck strap attachment. This had no neck strap attachment. Ooh. Well, focus, focus. This has no neck strap attachment, so people who are too weak to hold this with their little puny arms will get some relief by being able to use a neck strap. Fantastic. Um, it has the same lovely screen for its size as this one. 
And the sticks, they feel pretty good. I'm going to loosen the springs off. They're a bit tight on this one. I like my springs really loose. Um, and this had a single 18650 battery in the back. This has two 18650 batteries. They go under these plastic covers here. I'm not going to take them off. They're a bit of a pain in the backside. But you only need to do it once to put the batteries in because you can recharge through the USB-C connection up here, which is fantastic. It doesn't come with an SD card. If you want to put an SD card in it, because it's OpenTX, there's a little slot here for your micro SD. Um, I will do that. I'll get around to that. Um, but the, the great thing about this radio too, it overcomes the complaint I mentioned previously about this one. Look! It's got a handle. You can hold it by this antenna to carry it out. So you've got, you know, just even just a couple of fingers. You can hold that radio. The rest of your arms can be full of modelly stuff. Fantastic. I think because if we look at the Radio Master, you don't need an external antenna. There's no external antenna on this. For 2.4 gig operation, you don't need an external antenna. I think this is more of a handle than an antenna because there's, no, there's no point in having a you know a fold up antenna on these radios for for close range operation visual line of sight this is going to be more than adequate to have an internal antenna now this is pretty much a first look what i'm going to do is a tear down later on because i want to know i want to know where is is there an antenna in here there, there may be there may not be i'll tear it down and find out and if there is an antenna in here is it horizontally polarized or vertically polarized because that is really really important it's more important than you might think now when I fly with my jumper, I have the antenna like this, vertically polarized, so it's sticking up because that gives you the very best radiation pattern. If you have your antenna flat or out the side like that, you have a problem. You have a large null out this side and a large null out that side. The antenna itself, if you fly off the ends of the antenna, you're going to lose signal. Also, if the antenna on your aircraft is vertical, you're going to suffer from a cross polarization issue which will reduce your signal up to 100 times. Your signal strength will be up to 100 times lower if, you're, if your um, antennas are crossed. You say you've got perhaps a vertical on the model and a horizontal on the transmitter. So if this is a horizontally polarized antenna, it's not such a good thing. Um, they should have taken another leaf out of the Tango book because Tango has one of these fold up antennas, but you can rotate it so that it's vertical. And I always fly like this because the antennas on my models are vertical, so the null points are directly above me, in which case I'm only going to be a few hundred feet, and directly below me, in which case I've already crashed and I don't need the radio control. So everywhere else you've got a lovely radiation pattern with a vertically polarized antenna on your transmitter. So that's something to consider. So that's something that may have slipped up on there, but as I say, I will pull this apart. We'll have a look inside later on another video and see where the antenna actually is. It may even be inside, I don't know. We'll find out. But um, apart from that, it is a lovely, lovely radio. I have to say, I'm most happy with this. Some things I don't quite understand, though. Uh, in, in their desire to slavishly be inspired by DJI, they've put these buttons. Momentary contact. Why... There's not a lot of use for momentary contact buttons on a radio controller. What do you? What would you ever want to just have briefly acting? I mean, it's not like you. Let's put the let's put the undercarriage up for just a second. Okay, down again. Up, down. No, it's not going to work. Um, and these buttons here are just on off. They are logic buttons. So press it once, comes on. Press it again, it goes off. A lot of channels. What are you going to do with them? Not a lot of use for a lot of people, I think. But one where area they have scored immensely over this and over this. And, oh, excuse me, bump the camera, over this is here. Look, they've got scroll wheels. These little scroll wheels are really good. They've got a very powerful detent, which means you can find the center position very easily. One of my biggest complaints of the radios made by Radio Master and Jumper to date, I'm talking their full-size radios like the TX, uh, TX-16 and so forth, is that the, the, the sliders I've got have no real firm center position. So if you're using it for flaps, on my gliders quite often I use flaps. So I have down flap for landing and I have up flap for penetration or for losing altitude. But I don't want them sort of roughly in the middle. I want them exactly in the middle. And these feel quite firm. The, the indents are quite firm. So I will be using that quite a bit. That's really useful. And they also, they do fall under your fingers when you're flying directly under your fingers. You don't have to go hunting for them if you want to use them as a, a flap or as an undercarriage switch. So brilliant. That's that's nice. That's lovely. I like that. Um, yeah, sticks, Hall Effect sticks, nice and light. Certainly uh, you can lighten them up a bit from where these are. Equivalent to what these are, the same sticks, I think. I don't see too much difference. Let's have a look. Yeah, they look the same to me. Anyway, so that's it. That's the radio. Um, it's a first look. And first looks, I'm impressed. Of course, the big question everyone's going to be asking is, what are Radio Master going to do to counter this? How are they going to come out with a, an alternative to this? Because, 
this was a great alternative to the original jumper T light or whatever it is and I th we know there's something in the pipeline was it the Zen or the Zeus I don't know it starts with the, with the Z something coming out which will be a, a counter to this so I cannot wait to see where Radio Master take this but in the meantime if you want to transmit it now well based on my first observations I find very little not to like about this radio it feels heavier it feels meatier it feels really well built and it's got many of the things that I want as an RC flyer and of course multi-protocol and I will also be reviewing very shortly an option that they have for it which is an external ELRS module this one they sent it's an AI on or something I forget a AI on says on the label you probably can't read that point focus um, external ELR, ELRS 500 milliwatts and they provide the little adapter for putting it on the back here together these things make a kick-ass solution I'm sure at some stage we'll see multi-protocol radios with ELRS built in but in the meantime if you just want to get into it then this combo is pretty good you can buy this as a, as a in a number of forms you can just have the bare radio you can have the radio with the ELRS transmitter and they also have ELRS receivers and aren't these dinky little things oh, you can't see it's in the bag anyway so yeah a, a full range of solutions to your requirements and it is over 100 bucks I think so it's not as cheap not as cheap as this but it is a much nicer feeling radio than the little T-Lite this is this is something you use for your foamies I use it for bigger models but you know it, it just feels a little bit small this has come into the right size for me it's just that little bit bigger perfect in my hands um, in fact how does it compare to the Tango it's probably not too different to a Tango there you go so there's a lot of similarities here so if you like the Tango but you want to go ELRS you want a few other options um, might be worth looking at and that brings me to another important point which is um, Express LRS I haven't done much on Express LRS I've been looking watching observing but I'm going to do a series of videos because I'll tell you now to be honest I think the proprietary protocols their days are numbered they should be really worried right now Express LRS blows most of them away in performance certainly the cost of receivers and so forth blows away things like Crossfire and um, Ghost and everything else so yeah um, I'll be doing more focus on this there is a lot to be had from Express LRS and we'll look at that in detail in upcoming videos but in the meantime as a review of this product um, and I say have to say I have not flown it yet but I have no reason to believe it doesn't work well um, as the first installment of the review on this I'd say yeah <laughs> there's not much I can find to dislike it is certainly a step up from this and I will be switching most of my models to this and giving it a real thrashing over the next few weeks as we enjoy the southern summer of fun here check my XJet channel out for that and if there's anything that doesn't work if, it, if, it, if there's something wrong with it I will let you know and here's something I have blindly stolen from another channel called the thing the five things I like best about this radio and the five things I like least about it. let's start with the good things first of all I love the size it is an excellent size just a bit bigger than the previous model makes it much easier to hold feels firmer stronger secondly I like the fact it has a handle they may call it an aerial but it's a handle thirdly I like the fact it has the little trim joysticks much closer to the sticks than was the case on the Radio Master and it's certainly a lot easier to use these than the buttons that were on the previous version of this radio thirdly I like the fact that it's powered by two lithium ion cells and that those cells are 18650s so we can easily find them replace them whatever we need to do rather than the 1s of the original T light which made it difficult to power external things like a, a crossfire or an ELRS module and finally the fifth thing I like about this radio is the sliders or scroll wheels they are very very good with a very firm indent position marking the center position now the things I dislike most about this radio first of all it is the, the array of switches the choice of switches the push button switches are not latching like they are on the Tango 2 that's a bit of a shame you have to use some programming to make those switches useful also the row of single buttons across the top there well again not a lot of use I think for most people the second thing I'm not too happy about with this radio is that the ELRS system is an add-on it's external it would be nice it was built in to the multi-protocol aspect of the radio so those are the five things I like most about this radio and the two things I'm not so keen on oh did I mention lovely little carry case too see that lovely carry case and gimbal protector so this is really working for me um, one of the problems I have uh, with the 
tea light is it's just so difficult to the sticks poke out and things this put that on there this is a bit floppy doesn't matter when you get it in the bag put it in the little carrying case dunk, dunk. zip it up with a little bit of velcro here Doo -doo. if I can get the strap out there we go um, let's put that on there do that up close the case that ain't gonna get broken that's beautiful that goes in your backpack protects everything I like that that's a really it's a small but a really really useful feature having a wonderful case for your radio I have a QX 7s and the reason I used or have in the past used that radio so much is it came with a fantastic carrying case nothing more nothing less this one woo -hoo, look at that love it thanks for watching bye for now